Hi and welcome to cgboomer.com. Uh, this is Hans Erickson and I want to welcome you to day 16 of my uh, work in progress and making my short film to ultimately end up with a logo and a web header. Uh, this will be part three of my second prop which is my laptop uh, computer. So let's go ahead and get started on this as you know on the last installment we added all the keys and we're going to be labeling the keys at a later date uh, but right now I want to finish some of the basic modeling uh, so let's go ahead and get started with that and I think today we're going to work on the top if I go into side view and go into wireframe you can see how the keys and everything kind of protrude into the top and so what I want to do is I want to do some correction on that so when the lid closes the screen is hovering just above that area there. I also have a lip that's going to go around here to kind of latch and close on the deal there so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to kind of scroll this up. I had that all scrolled down when we're combining keys. Is I'm going to take this lid and I'm going to rotate it uh, a minus 90 degrees so it's going straight up and down. And go into front view. And let me go ahead back into solid and I'm going to kind of just rotate that just a little bit like that so I can kind of see what I'm doing. I am going to hit tab to go into edit mode and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a loop. So let's go control R and add a loop and I'm going to bring it to right about there. And then I'm going to hit Control R and I'm going to add two loops and I'm going to kind of zoom in here and I'm going to hit S and Z to constrain it on the Z axis and I'm going to expand it out to where I've kind of got a where this is kind of triangular right here. That's about what I want. Okay, let me go into face mode and I'm going to select that face and I'm going to hit E to extrude and extrude that inward about like that. Okay. Uh, let me pop out of edit mode here. Let me close that lid. Go to zero. Let's go to three side view. Z. And you can see that I'm kind of hovering right above that area there. So let me go ahead and tab for edit view and I'm going to G and Z and I'm going to bring it down just to where it is exactly at the top of that of that uh, of the keys. Alright. I'm going to go back into minus 90 to open that up. Go back into uh, solid view, hit 1 to kind of open it up or to move it directly in and that's pretty much what I want. Now um, if I were to go ahead and hit smooth you can see where uh, it is not looking good at all. So I, you know I'm going to have to add in some edge loops so let me go ahead and get that started. 
uh, I'll just go ahead into line here and I'm going to hit control R and I'm going to add a couple loops there and then S and X and kind of scale those out to where they kind of get close to the edge there. Same thing here, control R, add a couple loops in there and let's zoom in so I can get a better look and go S and Z to scale it on the Z axis and expand it out to right about there. Let me come up to the top and same thing, control R, add two loops by moving my scroll wheel and then S and Z and scaling that to right about there. Uh, we're going to need a lot more edge loops here so let me just go ahead and add these in right now. Let me go control R, two edge loops there, uh, S and Y this time and scale those out to right about there. Get some good edge control in there. Alright, let me come to the interior here, uh, hit control R and add two edge loops in there and go S and Y and scale those. Okay, that's got that controlled fairly well. And then the screen or this kind of screen area part here. I'm going to need to do something as well. So actually let me take those loops out there for a second. I want to do something. Mm. Let me just go control Z. Control Z. I want to grab these loops here and I want to scale them in just a little bit so that it isn't so straight up and down so I'm going to hit S. I'm going to scale it by excluding the Y axis because I don't want it to be going back so I'm going to hit Shift Y and I'm just going to kind of move it like that just a little bit so that you can see that it's it's kind of beveling in a little bit and I think I'm going to like that a lot better so now let me hit control R and this time I can't scale on the y-axis like that because it will distort those corners so I have to do it twice control R and scale that in kind of move that in right to there and that is about what I want. Now if I hit uh, tab you can see where that just looks a lot lot better. Alright, uh, let me make sure that I've got uh, a nice clean edge on that on the where the screen is eventually going to be so let's hit control R and add two loops and then S and Z and scale that whoops scale that down to pretty close to the bottom there and then one loop here control R and I'll just kinda move this over to right about there. Alright, tab back into object mode and that looks a little bit better. Let me go ahead and smooth it one more time there and that is about what I want. Now the screen is going to be inset from there just a little bit more so let's add a couple more loops. Uh, go into front view and by hitting 8 I'm going to kind of just move that down a little bit and I'm going to have the screen coming in into this area here. So let me go control R 
and I'm going to move this line to over right about there and then control R add two loops and I'm going to S and Z and scale that to where I've kind of made a rectangle or a square right in this area here and that again is what I want I'm going to get into uh, edit mode with my uh, uh, face select I'm going to grab these two I'm going to grab that those two faces I'm still in uh, mirror mode so all I have to do is click one and the other side clicks as well I'm going to extrude on the y-axis I'm going to hold on my shift key and I'm just going to pull it in just a tiny tiny bit and then I'm going to again do the same thing I did before uh, in my line mode here I'm going to S exclude the y-axis by hitting shift Y and I'm just gonna kinda scale those in just a little bit so I get a little beveled edge there and that's gonna be my screen and I'm gonna have to add some control lines in there so let me go control R and add two loops and S and Z and well that's not working that time that's because I think I got some bevels in there so control R or excuse me control Z oops control Z to kind of get rid of that I'm gonna go control R and I'm just gonna slide that loop up to right about there control R and slide that loop down to right about actually I've already got a loop in there don't I let me see yeah I do so let me uh, hit X and delete that edge loop uh, so now I can go control R and slide an edge loop right over to here alright let's come up to the top and control R and slide that down to right about there I'm gonna need a couple edge loops in here so let's go control R and slide an edge up to there control R and slide that edge down to there and let's take a look and see what we got and that doesn't look too bad I just kinda need to control the screen a little bit more so let me get into here I'm gonna go control R two loops and S and Z and scale that down to right about there alright and then control R and scale that to right about C, G, and X. I'll move it to right about there. Alright. Not bad at all. Let me... <coughs> excuse me. And that's pretty basically the shape of my screen. I'm not going to go a whole lot further. I'm going to go ahead and apply the mirror modifier. Seeing as I don't need it really anymore. I don't need to really add any multi-resolution to it, but uh, I can. 
just to maybe clean it up just a little bit. So I'm going to hit multi-resolution. I'm going to subdivide it just one time and that smoothed it out quite a bit. Make sure that I'm perfectly smooth on everything and that's looking that's looking just fine for me. Uh, the one edge loop that I don't really need anymore is right here that was only there for my uh, you know to kind of control my center uh, between my two mirrors so I can hit X and delete that edge loop and that just takes out 48 vertices so that was kind of nice and in fact let's look here and see if I can do the same thing here uh, actually I think I probably need to leave that edge in there uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that edge in that particular one there okay I am good to go there uh, let's move on to my uh, CD case and as you can see it just kind of freely moves around and that is not what we want at all what I want it to do is slide out on the x-axis only so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock its location so it doesn't go anywhere on the y-axis or the z-axis I'm also going to lock all rotation so it doesn't rotate at all and now if I hit G it only slides in and out but it slides too far in both directions so because I can completely move it all the way out and that's not what I want so let me go into my constraint panel add constraint and I'm going to hit limit location again if I kind of expand this you can see this is X Y and Z so I'm going to lock all of the by looking up here my locations are 0 0 0 0 so I'm going to leave those defaulted like that my minimum okay if I pull this out you can see that it pulls out in the positive X direction so I'm going to say my minimum will be 0 let me go into top view Z for excuse me Z for wireframe now if I move this out G you can see that if I pull it out probably 1.25 is about what I want I'm not exactly sure that's what I want but for right now that's gonna be what I'm going to say so if I click this and go 1.25 oops 1.25 now when I go to hit G to move it that's as far as it'll move it'll go to 0 and 1.25 and that is it so that I'm good to go on so let me get rid of let me see there I am uh, I see my keys have made it to this layer here so let me click on the keys and I'm going to move the keys to a completely separate layer I'm gonna go into solid view and I'm gonna start modeling my little CD case here okay right now uh, this is kinda of modeled as a block and of course you know a CD a tray is not a block it's actually kinda of got a lip right here and then kinda of proceed protrudes down like that uh, but I model it as a block to kinda of get the basic form and shape uh, so I'm gonna click that go into edit view and I put a bunch of uh, uh, edge loops in here to kinda of control it to hold its shape because as you know I've got it at a multi resolution multi resolution of up to two and because eventually we're gonna put a circle in there and you know I'm gonna need a circle uh, in order to 
uh, make the circle part of the tray. So I'm going to leave that multi-resolution there, but I'm going to take these edge loops and I'm going to Alt, right click on them, I'm going to hit X, and I'm going to delete these edge loops. I'm probably going to I'm going to be putting more in again, but for right now they're going to interfere and get in the way, so I'm just going to delete all of them for right now and add new edge loops in as I need them. But like I say, right now I've modeled this several times and I just know they're going to kind of get in the way. So let me just kind of delete all of those. Uh, Alt, right click, X, edge loop. And now I got a just a basic cube. If I were to go into object mode, you can see that it distorts terribly, but we're going to fix that right now. So first of all, let's go ahead and add one edge loop, control R, and I'm going to move it over to about the thickness of what I want that lip to look like. And that's going to be right about there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I can stay in line mode here. I'm going to click this line, this line, this line, and this line. And I'm going to extrude. Actually, no, I'm not going to do it that way. Um, that's kind of a dumb way of doing it. Let me do this instead. I'm going to hit Control R and add another loop there, and I'm going to move it up to right about here. So now if I come up here and go into face mode, I'm going to take this face, this face, this face, and this face, and I'm going to X and delete faces. Uh, if I go into line mode, I can then, well actually, I should have deleted all of that too. Let me just do that real quick. X and edges. Um, X edges. There we go. Huh, I had some double edges in there, so I'm glad I did that. Uh, I'm going to grab this edge and this edge, hit F and create a face. I'm going to hit this edge and this edge, hit F and create a face. Now that is exactly what I want. Uh, now, I'm going to go into top view and I'm going to go into face mode, select that top face, hit shift S, and I'm going to go selection, or excuse me, cursor to selection, because what I want to do is I want to add a circle right to the top of that face. So go 7 to get to the top, uh, staying in edit view, I'm going to go shift A to add circle. I'm going to change my circle to 12 vertices, uh, go into vertex mode, and I'm going to size it down to about what I want it, my, just to kind of within, kind of constrain myself within that uh, tray, and then I'm going to go G, <coughs> sub X, and I'm just going to kind of move it over to about here. And now I've got this pretty well positioned. So now if I hit Control R, I'm going to add an edge loop, and I'm going to kind of line it up right with that vertex there. I'm going to hit Control R, and that lined up very well. I'm going to hit Control R, add another edge loop there, and just click into it. Uh, 
control R and just go ahead and click into that uh, control R and I'm going to move this down to right about here control R and move that to right about there and I think that's about what I want no actually I'm going to take this edge loop here uh, I'm going to select that edge loop I'm going to hit control E oops yeah it's a control E edge slide yeah and I'm just going to slide it to right about there uh, control I'm going to select that edge uh, control E edge slide and kind of move it just outside of the bounds there all right good I've got what I want there I'm going to go into face mode I'm going to take these faces here and I'm going to X delete faces go into vertex mode and I'm going to click on this one click on this one and I'm going to hit merge at last I'm going to do the same thing here and click merge at last same thing here because I want to I want to maintain that same shape merge at last and then merge at last now I gotta connect the rest of these here uh, you see I got one two three four five vertexes so I'm going to come into here I'm gonna hit control R and just add an edge loop and maybe slide it out to actually I can just kinda leave it where it's at do the same thing here control R add an edge loop and kinda leave it right there now if I take this vertex here this vertex here merge at last you can see that I still have made a polygon hit this one and this one merge at last I still have polygons one two three four do the same thing here this one and this one merge at last this one and this one uh, whoops merge at last they may not be pretty polygons but they're polygons nonetheless merge at last this one and this one merge at last I'm going to go ahead and ah that's good enough it'll everything will live everything will be just fine um actually I could take let me see here kind of make this look a little bit better let me hit uh, alt see if that works mm, it should let me see alt e edge slide no that's not going to work I just need to leave that all alone all right oh I got to do this here uh, this one and this one merge at last this one and this one merge at last okay let me uh, go in select all and just to make sure uh, I'm going to uh, come down here and hit remove doubles and you see that I had seven vertices doubled up and that got rid of those the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recalculate the normals so everything is is uh, pointing in the right direction 
and let's continue with the basic modeling here. All right, uh, let me grab this circle here, and now I'm going to extrude this circle on the z-axis and pull it down to right about there. All right, I'm now going to extrude again by hitting E, and I'm going to click right out of it, and I'm going to kind of zoom in here, and I'm going to S, and just bring it in very, very little, because I know I'm going to need uh, an edge control there. I'm going to hit Control E, oops, uh, Control or excuse me, E to extrude again, uh, S to scale, and go about halfway, control, or I'm going to hit E again, click out of it, I'm going to go merge at center, and I've got my CD slot, so to speak. I just need to add, finish up with my uh, edge loops here to kind of control everything. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Control R, uh, add two edge loops here, uh, S and Z, scale them on the Z axis, bring them up to about there. That takes care of that. Uh, I'm going to need a couple loops in here. Control R. I'm just going to add two oops, two loops, scroll up on my mouse wheel, just one slot, and that'll take care of that. Uh, I'm going to go Control R and add two edge loops here. I don't really need it here, but I'm going to need it in here. So let's go ahead and hit S and Z and scale those to right there. All right, that looks good. I'm going to need an edge loop coming across here, so let me hit Control R. And y this is all kind of kinky looking right here, but the way we can do that is if I just kind of bring it in uh, about right about to there, and then hit S, X, and 0 you see that straighten that line right up. And I know that kind of kink that a little bit, but that really doesn't matter. Uh, let me come over here. Well, let me see. All right, that looks good. Let's come over to this side over here. We'll hit Control R, add an edge loop, scroll it down to right about there, and again hit uh, S and X and 0 and that straighten that one out. I'm sorry, we just had a little interruption. My granddaughter is potty training and she just came to tell me her achievement. Uh, so let me go ahead and continue on here. Uh, we're going to have to add some edge loops right in here. So let's go Control R and I think this will work and go S and Z and get that control in there. Let's go ahead and look in in object mode and that does not look too bad at all. Uh, I think I'm going to fly with that. So um, let's go ahead and bring everything back, take a look here, and let's grab this and move this out. And you can see that I've kind of gone too far now. I just kind of guessed at how far it should come out, actually. Um, hold on one second, please. Okay, sorry, I had one more interruption. So let's uh, go ahead and go into top view here and whoops and kind of position ourselves here we can kind of collapse this a little bit don't need it quite that big 
and let's hit G and kind of move that out and actually right about there wouldn't be too bad and as you can see the x-axis if you look up here is about 1.1 so let's go to our constraint panel over here um, and just hit change that value to 1.1 and now when we go to open and close it opens and closes just about that far it's uh, fairly well limited all right now if we hit alt r <coughs> excuse me on our uh, or excuse me alt g it snaps right back into place uh, so let's uh, take a look at our model here we'll take this and we'll rotate it all the way open We'll take our CD and grab it and move it out all the way. And this is about the state of what we're at in this tutorial. Um, my screen still doesn't look perfectly right to me. Let me see. Hmm. No, it's okay, I guess. Yeah, it's okay. It's just some of the shininess in it. Um, let me try one thing here. Uh, let me tab in here. Let me hit Control R and put a couple loops in here. S and Z and I'm just, whoops, I need to be at uh, going here. I need to be at 90 degrees here. Minus 90 for that to work. Uh, go back into edit mode here go S and Z and just go maybe about that far uh, control R put in two loops S and X right about to there and let's go back yeah, that looks much flatter. I, we just needed a couple loops in there to get rid of some of that distortion looking in there. So there we have it. Uh, this is pretty much the modeling as far as I'm going to go at the moment. As you know, a CD tray has like little holes and stuff in here. I'm not really going to get too involved in this at the moment. I may later on, but right now I'm going to call this modeling as finished. And... Uh, next session we're going to go ahead and start labeling the keys and taking care of some of the other textures so at this time i want to thank you for taking part of my uh, short little uh, tutorial here uh, finishing up the modeling of the cd as you can see it wasn't all that hard as always uh, you can go to my website at cgboomer.com and download the textures uh, reference materials and blend file at the state of this tutorial uh, if you want to pick up uh, the beginning of this uh, where we're at at the very beginning of this tutorial you can just go to the preceding day and pick up that blend file and continue on from there uh, but anyways I want to thank you for joining me again this is Hans Erickson at cgboomer.com and happy blending